So now in this video, we're going to take a, a single supply, and so that's a single battery, for instance, and turn it into a split supply. And what that does is you can take uh, two 9-volt batteries, I used to do this, and take uh, you put them in series, you take the point where the two of them connect, and you declare that that's ground. That's your 0-volt reference point, and then at that point you have 9 volts uh, positive, and you have 9 volts negative. Makes it very easy to uh, alternate current. But basically what you did was take an 18 volt uh, power supply and turn it into a split uh, 9 plus minus supply. So we're going to do uh, basically the same circuit where we split a, a single supply voltage but uh, we're going to use an op amp. So now I got the uh, LM358 right there. We will uh, scoot this over really quick and uh, take a, a closer look. And so the pin layout for it, I have the uh, case that it came in and it gives you the pin layout. It's really nice. So we got the uh, power pins already on there plus uh, number eight and then uh, number four is the uh, minus or ground. And uh, even though it's a single supply uh, op amp, you can use it as a, a dual supply or a split supply. You can, you can do both. So in this case we're going to split the voltage with uh, this op amp there. So on the top is the output, right below it's the inverting input, and then the non-inverting input. And the way that I have this drawn out, the inverting input's above the non-inverting input. So it lines up. And uh, you can see we got a line working our way back. There's a little jumper right there. And uh, it should be pretty obvious we got that there. Now, so this is the output. This is just extending the range of the output. So I can plug something in. If I'm like working a circuitry over there, I can work my way up and right over instead of trying to uh, bend a wire down that way or something. But in uh, any case, the main point is we have that negative feedback right there. And then we set a voltage and we want half of the total voltage. We're gonna use 100 kilo ohm resistors. They just have to be equal value. Exact value doesn't matter. And so, I'm going to grab this one, and uh, so this is the non-inverting input right there, the plus. We're going to go to a uh, positive right there, and then uh, this one, we're going to go again to the non-inverting input, and then work our way over to the negative there. So we'll get half of the supply voltage. So that's going to split the power supply. I'll get the multimeter ready, and we'll take some multimeter measurements. So now, since we used the uh, 18 volts split into a couple of 9 volts there, we will do that. I'm going to add actually 0.2. There we go. Because it won't quite get the uh, full voltage, and then they'll be slightly below 9, and it looks a little awkward. So we'll step it up just a little bit. So we will turn the multimeter to measure voltage. It's auto ranging. I just have to set it to voltage. Red probe stays there for everything but high current. Now, again, our ground is not the negative rail anymore. We're going to declare this is ground. This is the zero volt reference point. And uh, you'll see that uh, here we have a negative 9 volts right there. Just like we said, we can go to the resistor or that jumper and uh, the resistor that goes to the positive rail. And there you can see we have a positive 9 volts right there. So we split the supply. Now the uh, LM358, we can raise if it's DC voltage up to 32 volts. And uh, so instead we're going to go to 30 because you commonly see that in circuits. And uh, so a lot of times that's, that's maxed out for uh, this power supply right there. And uh, that was actually one of the things I looked at when I got this power supply because you come across tons of op amp circuits where there is the uh, negative 15 volts to the uh, positive 15 volts that they work with. And uh, there you can see we, we pretty much have that right there. We're just a spec shy because they can't go a spec above 30. You lose a little bit of voltage in the wires and uh, all that, but it's hardly any. So, in any case, again, look at circuits build circuits and stuff and I go from there 
and so make sure your power supply can match the circuits that you come across. It makes life a lot easier. Then you can use the exact components that they're using until you get familiar with it and you can make adjustments. But in any case, that's it for this video. Uh, some op amps use split supplies. So I didn't go into that in the great detail. This is a quick uh, video. I just mostly focused on the uh, circuit. But some of them depend on it. This is a single supply op amp. So it doesn't. But other ones do. So any case, now you know how you can easily split a supply with an op amp. And the op amp doesn't have to be a single supply op amp to split it. The uh, split supply op amps, the dual supply op amps, they do exactly the same thing. They'll work uh, just as well. So, check out the other videos I'm uh, posting, and uh, donate to Patreon if you can. Click like, subscribe, the bell. I'll see you in the next video.